give the opportunity for more people who haven't seen it to see it. Um, so with that, that's kind of my advice, is definitely making sure you're doing your part, because it's a 50-50 thing, you know what I mean? If they're gonna come and like and comment on your stuff, you have to do it as well. You'll even see some people post with like, if you're not liking my stuff or commenting, I'm unfollowing you. So just try to be active with that. And uh, I would say kind of keep who you're following very tightly managed, because you don't want to follow 10,000 people because that's a lot of work. Uh, as you grow, sure, but I try to keep ours pretty tightly managed and the people I do follow, I really do care about and it's something I do support. Um, so I don't feel bad about sharing. Um, and then I think when setting yourself apart, it's it might take time, but you have to definitely, um, you have to just find something that's gonna set you apart. So like with us, like I said, there's thousands of other people selling thrift. Um, the one thing that we have, if you look on our profile, If you read our bio, right here, home of the $5 t-shirt though, no one else can put that. They could make it and then they can put it, but we're the first to do it. Everyone, we get a lot of hate for this, to be honest, a lot of thrift, I thought of that, this and that. Okay, why didn't you put the system in place then? On our website, you can go and sign up, automatically gonna take the payment out. No one else has that in place. So we took the time to do that and branded ourselves with that. So that's like a big thing. It's on our business cards. And like, it, like if you look at our business cards right here, we even have a coupon on the back. We have a ton of these. So it's for the $5 t-shirt club. So the front, it's a cool business card. Circle, it's like our, uh, our, uh, our brand, it's the world. Um, and then what's cool about this is you gotta think, like everyone's always thinking, okay, business cards they get thrown at so us. I'm like, okay, everyone says make them thicker, that's cool, make them unique. I don't know the last time I saw a circle business card. Colors are bold, you can tell the logo, you can tell all the info on it. But then on the back, there's a, a coupon. Literally, there's value to this, to hold on to this. So with this, you get literally your first month free with our subscription program. You get a free t-shirt, first month free. So we hand those out all the time and it's good to be able to be like, Instead of being like, hey, here's my card, it's like, hey, here's a free shirt. Because it's relevant to what we do. People are like, oh, that's right, you guys sell clothes. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you gotta follow us and like, here, take this, it's a, it's a free shirt. And um, so I think, yeah, like, with that, it, it's creating that, that difference, you know, making yourself unique. Um, and, and we do it in, in other ways too, but I would say like, that's our big one. Um, another thing I think that sets us apart from the other people thrifting is a lot of them just sell online, some of them just have stores. We do both, we have the subscription service, we have a YouTube channel. Um, another thing we do is we have, uh, everyone familiar with Instagram Live? Mm -hmm. So every week, and you'll see these if you, if you follow us, you'll get the notifications. We do it like one to three times a week. We go live with another thrifter, sometimes from another country. We interviewed this guy from London the other day, from New Zealand. I got these guys from, um, I think Thailand. Um, and then plenty from the U.S., but always in, we interview people every single week, like one to three times, and we just talk vintage, talk about their business, talk about their startups, but all that kind of stuff is what goes into keeping our interactions high, keeping people engaged, and just keeping them interested in what we have going on. So, so, so these are more than just marketing. One, when Alessandro suggested how they're differentiating themselves, this is a key concept of called competitive advantage and strategy. And if, you know what sets you apart, and why someone would want to, you know, buy a product from them over another company. So these are these are, we'll say, concepts that they put into action. Uh, another thing is this idea of interviewing their customers. It's yes, it could be certainly tied to marketing because they put it on Instagram Live. But at the same time, it's getting feedback about their customers because you might start finding trends that might be happening uh, to improve their offerings to. Uh, how to communicate to them, how they see the trends, and, and this is um, a form of research uh, that is important to all businesses to know how their clients or customers or end users are engaging, thinking, and using their products. So this is not so different than the exact processes, theories, and frameworks that you learn in the business program. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And to kind of go back to your question, um, Me, yeah, Sarah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Sarah? Yes. Okay, to go back to your question, like you were saying, do we use any of the stuff we learn in college? Yes. I think a lot of times the stuff in college, it's just, 
not even disguised, it's just against that level of professionalism. Instead of saying like, oh, we're promoting our business, it's strategic marketing. There's that professional term to it. So I think a lot of the stuff in college sometimes is, I hate to say it, but like disguised by that, or we just don't understand it, it's a millennial thing, like, you know, we like to dumb things down, make them simple. Um, but yeah, me and Nick will sit here sometimes and we'll be like, oh my God, like what we're doing right now is strategic marketing or grassroots marketing or financial analytics, like, and you just don't realize it sometimes. Um, but yeah, every single day we're, we're using some, kind, some, some knowledge, uh, someone, a network, whatever we take. From How them. important is presenting and some of the soft skills? Presenting? I think it's really important, for sure. I think, uh, especially with, like, with us, with our product, it's, uh, it's also one of one. We're not necessarily making the products ourselves, but like this t-shirt, like someone already bought it. So like, I don't have another one. You know, so if we, we like it, sorry, it's gone. So it's very here and now. And so with that, people, and a lot of times some of the prices, people are like, whoa, what the, $80 for a t-shirt, 200 bucks. And you gotta be able to explain that. Like, you have to tell them like, why it's that much, the year it's from, the significance of like the artist or the brand, whatever goes into it. But basically, like one thing I can compare it to is these really guys, they're kind of like the kings of this industry. Their brand is round two. They have stores all over the nation. They did it. Yeah, so he has that. Cool. So, uh, so we went down to their grand opening in Miami. Were you there? I was there. Yeah, that's why I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I know you guys are somewhere. You, yeah. said, you said something about um, the cool girl. You said something about uh, three daughters. I thought I might have saw you guys there. Maybe but, there too, yeah. So we do events there. Yeah, they sell like a bunch of like, hype stuff. Mm -hmm. I like to buy and sell that stuff. So. Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we went down there and brought a bunch of stuff that was like real, that we, like you said, hyped, really cool stuff that in our shops here just wasn't doing too well. I'm not getting the prices for people aren't like appreciating. Cause again, it's very niche. Like, like he's just like, he's the only person in here who kind of is like right on the wave with us. who knows exactly what's going on. You know, sorry to interrupt. You know Don Foster? I don't think so. He owns the, the PAX uh, clothing brand. P-A-X? Yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Is he local? Yeah, he's okay. local. Okay. Yeah, he's like a really good friend of mine. I've worked okay. with him a few times too. So. Cool. Um, oh, go ahead. Can you show an example of like one of your higher shirts? And, like, yeah. Like why it is that price? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of times it's, it's the main thing is cause it's, uh, it's like almost like good luck finding it somewhere else. It's going to be really hard. It's not like when, it's not like when you walk into Paxson and you're like, oh shit, they don't have that large OVAT. Okay, I'll go to the countryside location. I'll go to that. It's like, well, we have it here. We have it in your size. And otherwise, it's like you're gonna have to scour the internet. You have to go to a ton of markets. Who know? Like, it's just kind of like who knows when you're gonna find it again, almost. So that's all, I want to say that's the main thing. Uh, aside from that, it's a lot of times. Uh, how old it is, yeah. if it's like really, really vintage, 80s, 70s, band tees, all those kind of things are for more, what kind of band it is, uh, what brand it is, that kind of stuff. And then like, I would say definitely like for the band tees, especially it's very easy to explain. So it's a lot of times the tour or the album associated with that shirt, the year. And a lot of times one thing most people don't understand is a lot of this stuff was only made in a certain quantity. So like a certain tour, uh, they might have like two separate shirts for it, and then each one's only a limited count. Uh, you might have one shirt that's like for this tour, but was only this certain graphic at this certain, uh, it's just very like here and now, and just pretty much all I can say is just details, I guess, yeah. really. So it sounds like the idea of pitching or presenting is something that we have to do regularly, oh, yeah. relevant to what we do here in our was, you know, why would one be worth more than the other? And you had to tell the story right. in terms of why right. that has a different value than the next right. one. And what are we doing? We're telling stories about management as a way of learning, by doing, but also helping others learn those concepts as well. So these are important things and connecting why we're here in class and how it relates to an actual business. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I think it's, uh, it's relatively new with social media and other things, 
But things that add value to the clothes is if celebrities are seen in it. Yeah. And that's just like, I, I don't, it's crazy to me, but yeah. yeah, like I have this one shirt, Sergio Tashini, it's just like kind of like an older, like 80s, 90s, like sports brand. But we had it, it was brand new with the tags from like 93 or something like that. I'm like, yo, this, this is a really cool shirt. And I had it at like 50 bucks. Then next thing you know, one of my friends comes in town, we're watching music videos, and he puts on the Juicy music video by Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls is in the damn shirt in the video. I'm like, okay, that's really cool. So then I post a video, uh, I post a photo of him and the fact that we have the shirt, and that just like kind of boosted the value. So I'm like, okay, like I can probably like move this shirt up to like a hundred bucks or something like that now. Then when we go to that grand opening at round two, I bring that, so I'm like, let's see what they think of this. And so I show the guy at first, he's like, oh yeah, this is cool. Probably would have given me like 25, 50 bucks. Then I show him that photo, that photo reference, instantly he's like, okay, yeah, 100 bucks. Yeah. So it's again, like he's saying, like being able to pitch it, having that, back, that background knowledge, doing your research, just like you would with a presentation in class, it's like doing 